you're going to hear people that love the idea of cash value life insurance. They love it, they preach it just like you. But you're also gonna hear a lot of people that say what? Trash value, stuff sucks, you know, I don't want it. No, here's the thing. The thing to always consider, and one thing I always am considering is that extremism of one type is never a good thing. I would never go out and tell anybody, put all your money this, put all your money there. It's just showing you how this can look versus some other alternatives out there. Is it, it isn't saying that one is necessarily better than the other. It's pointing out different factors that could influence your decision that it may be important to you. Things to consider down the road. All right, so my guest today is Zan Ruzel, Director of Sales for National Live Group. And no, he's not sitting at a doctor's office. That's his education behind him. He's a certified life, a, a chartered life underwriter, a certified, a, a, excuse me, a certified chartered life underwriter, chartered financial consultant, certified financial planner. And what's the other one with the RI? What, what's that? OPP? We got the retirement income certified professional, the alphabet soup of this business, my friend. You know, and one thing about business, man, you got to make sure you surround yourself with people a whole lot smarter than you. And so if you're watching this video, uh, that's this conversation. <laughs> so Zan, welcome to this conversation here on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. I'm glad you're here, Thanks my man. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. So Zan, one of, my, one of my most watched videos and most commented videos was really the four homes of money. So if you guys have been uh, watching this episode here, the four homes of money, check this episode out where we discuss the different breakdowns of where potentially you can post, put your money if you're saving for your financial future. And so Zen, we discussed in that four homes of money, you can put your money inside the banks, you can put your money inside a, a non-qualified, like a bro brokerage account where you're earning, you know, whatever you, but you're buying whatever inside that brokerage account. Uh, the third one is investing in a, uh, putting your money in a uh, 401k account, which is technically called a qualified type account, whether you're 401k, 403b, TSP, et cetera, et cetera. And the fourth one was a mystery industry and, uh, and when I shared what that mystery industry was, we disclosed that it was the life insurance industry. So, uh, Zan, I mean, you came from the University of Vermont. You went to the University of Vermont. And what's the other school you went to uh, just up the street from, uh, from Yale there? The difficult one to pronounce, a little tiny school called Quinnipiac University. <laughs> I love Down. that. Very cool. Uh, Mm -hmm. One more time, everybody. Quinn Piak. QU, baby. Go Bobcats. <laughs> and you're a soccer player. You played soccer. Right? You're a soccer guy. Yeah. I was a soccer player my whole life. Played at Quinnipiac. Played at University of Vermont. Played a little bit afterward. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's not as easy these days, Matt. I was a goalkeeper, so I'm diving around left and right. So doing that at 32. Wow. A little harder to recover. <laughs> you know, every time I see those guys, you know, dive around, especially uh, what do you call that kick when the, the kickers just line up there and it's like a free shot? You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Direct kicks. Yeah, direct kicks. And then you got to kind of guess based on their body language where they're going to go. And I'm always envisioning myself that I go out and stretch my body to try to block the kick, uh, block the ball from coming to the goal. And then I crush my skull into the goal post. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? Man, it's happened. And yeah, yeah, penalty kicks. Oh, man, I don't know where my mind's at, but I made my head's hit too many posts. But yeah, oh, my head has hit many things over the years, man. But it's it's a guessing game. It's a it's a total, it, it, and kind of like, you know, um, that's part of being a goalkeeper, though. And I find when you when you get into this industry, though, it's there's so many head games that you play and the mentality piece, uh, it all carries over from sports though. And I think that's what, where we've been able to get a lot of success. So, you know, the interesting thing about our conversation today is removing the guessing game from where you put your serious money for your financial future, whether you're saving for your kid's college education, whether you're saving to fund your business down the road with some form of capital investment, you know, you're expanding your office space, you're buying new equipment, or you are planning for your retirement to, to supplement whatever you want to do for the rest of your life. You don't have to be in a guessing game when it comes to that. And we're going to share with you a report here called the various financial alternative alternatives report, which is, you know, which is a piece of software that I loved when I was a, when I went, when I was a uh, 
a person that was individually seeing clients from 1998 to 2010. I use this software all the time. So for you, those who are watching this, we're going we're gonna to share this here in a second. But before we, get, we dive into the report, Zan, before we dive into the reports, you know, why is a talented guy like you? I'm, I'm curious, and share this with everybody, please. Why is a talented guy like you? Obviously a very smart guy, and obviously a very fi- a physically fit dude. I mean, you're an Ironman competitor, right? You, you do it all. You run miles, you run marathons, you swim, you bike. How come a guy like you isn't on Wall Street? What brought you, what drew you to be a financial professional inside the life insurance industry? Well, it's funny you mentioned that, Matt, because that's originally what I went to school for. Uh, when I was in Quinnipiac, um, I was I was trading. I was uh, managing our schools. We, we would get money from the endowment fund and, and I'd actually um, be with a team of people on Bloomberg terminals and we would be trading um, for the schools endowment fund and uh, doing valuations of different equities and stock to invest in. And afterward, that was my, that was the target. I, I was actually interviewing New York City, interviewed with Goldman Sachs. Um, that's the direction that I was, uh, you know, educating myself to go to, but things took a spin. And I stumbled back home. I'm from Vermont, little company, big company, growing fast. Just that was there the entire time. Getting into this, though, you really get to draw skills, though, from so many different places. And, and I see a lot of my finance background that comes into this. Um, but, but really, it's, it's the relationship part of this. It, it, Wall Street and, and going in that route, uh, it's just, it wasn't for me. I needed to be um, interacting with people more, and I needed to be closer to the root cause of the business, which is what this industry is all about. Um, you're able to deliver checks, whether people are gathering at a funeral for a loved one or checks for those that are living, whether it's for retirement income or illness. So you're closer to the root cause and that's what I wanted. Wow. So you're driven by the crusade and what this industry does versus being a stock job. Yeah. Uh, on, exactly. on Wall Street. Interesting. Very, very cool. So, so mm-hmm. Zan, when, 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 we're, when we're talking about the life insurance industry, a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions or myths or assumptions. Some and, and most, some and most are negative because they feel that the only time that life insurance pays is when somebody sadly passes away, when somebody sadly dies. And, um, and I'm very, you know, uh, early in the year, actually earlier last year, we did, we did a, we did a uh, interview with Dustin and Kenyon Frampton. By the way, if you guys haven't seen mm-hmm. it, watch this video right here. Is the gentleman, Dustin is the gentleman who actually built my website. And uh, lo and behold, uh, Zan, he uh, at 38 years old has a stroke. And uh, brother, I just want to let you know, man, I, I applaud your company because the living benefit of life insurance, which is what a lot of people don't realize about life insurance, it not only pays you when you check out, but more importantly, it pays you while you're alive. And that's this conversation on this video, but he got paid, you know, you reported that he got a multiple six figure income check once he survived the stroke. And now they are running their own insurance agency on the South side of Chicago because nobody can tell them any different about what the life insurance does in terms of changing lives. And I know recently, Zan, you too, you had a situation where somebody uh, had a change in health. I think they, was, they were dealing with cancer or something like that. Can, can you kind of fill us in what happened to that scenario? And they got a, they also got a check too as well. I think it was on your, uh, yeah. on your Instagram stories. Yeah, absolutely. And these are the, like you're saying, Matt, these are the type of stories that people, they send chills down your spine. They are stories that are say, literally heroic acts by agents that are delivering checks to living people that are at the darkest hour. of every bankruptcy in our country is the direct result of a critical illness. It's a sad state of affairs. So if you ask yourself, what are you going to do if something like that happened right now? Most of Americans are just thinking, well, health insurance, you know, they'll take care of it. But that's not the case. What's going to replace your income? And so stories like this and what you were alluding to um, recently a um, a 36 year old woman diagnosed with breast cancer. She took out a policy with the National Life Group and she was completely healthy when she took it out. After a year and a half, finds out that 
she's got breast cancer and hadn't paid a whole lot into that policy over a year and a half, but was able to get a check for about $350,000, which she would not have had with a policy that isn't able to help you while you're living. Matt, I could go on and on about different stories. I mean, I've got them from six-year-old kids hmm. receiving checks for $450,000 because of terminal illnesses. This is money that is not going to appear if there is a different type of policy and it makes all the difference in the world. Um, what we do is very special and more Americans need to understand that we are here to help while people are living and not just when they pass away and taking care of their families. And that's, that's profound stuff, guys. And uh, that's probably uh, uh, um, content for another episode, but I just want to yeah. share with the folks that are watching this video that life insurance is more than just for dying. And what Zan had mentioned, you know, there's other components of life. What happens if you uh, 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 die too soon? Obviously, that's what death, death benefits pay for. But what happens if you deal with a change in health? What happens in this case or this conversation we're about to have right now? What happens if you live a very long life, right? And we're, we're, we, got a, we got an amazing report here called the Various Financial Alternatives. Here, we're going to share with you the numbers because let's go and share some numbers. You guys are asking for details. You're asking for actual numbers. If I put my money here versus here, or I put my money here versus here, I've taken my money and, and projected to the four homes of money type of conceptual type of a whiteboard uh, 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 educational uh, presentation. But we actually have actual data right now. People lie, but numbers don't. So uh, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, and share a little bit about this. But before I share this, if you if you haven't done so already, if you're watching this guys on Facebook, you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you like our business page. Uh, money smart guy if you're watching this on youtube make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel called seven figure squad make sure you follow we'll put we'll put zan's instagram handle here real quick too as well make sure you follow zan ruzel on instagram a lot of educational stuff that he puts there on social media on his profile as well as his stories he's probably one of the very few guys that works with an insurance company that uses social media to communicate his message so <laughs> uh, and i appreciate you for taking over taking after you matt you lead the way <laughs> You know, without without disclosing too much, but last week we just had a carry me PHP agency. We had a carry me with all the different insurance carriers uh, we did business with, and I, I just had to name drop your name in front of all your peers and all your competitors that you're you're doing what the rest of the life insurance industry should be doing, which is using social media. Isn't that crazy? Don't blow my cover, man. <laughs> trying to trying to keep this thing the social media thing secret, you know, because it's it's just so small. No one's heard about it yet. <laughs> so, so I, I, I've got this report. And we're we're going to share a P, we're going to show the PDF here. We'll share my screen here in a second. We're going to go over these numbers. But here's the assumption, everybody. If you're watching this video, here's the assumption. Follow me now. We had, we had an assumption that at 35 years old, and this is just numbers we put out. It could be massage, whatever your situation is, your personal situation. But I just want to disclose, both Zan and I are both licensed insurance professionals. Okay, we're both licensed insurance professionals, and yet we are not this. We're not giving financial advice. We're not giving insurance advice. Uh, we're just two dudes talking. This is an informational, educational conversation. If you want to have these type of reports and numbers uh, done specifically for you, all that we say is you go to the insurance profession you're normally working with and ask them to explain it based on some of the concepts we shared with here, uh, share with you here. So I just want to make sure we put that out there. Our legal disclaimer. We're about to do another legal disclaimer here once we share this PDF. But uh, 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 that's the world we live in. But I uh, just want to make Mine's sure baby. that we share that. But he, here's also the assumption, okay? I'm assuming that somebody's 35 years old, okay? So, boom, 35 years old. The second assumption is they're talking away 500 bucks away into some form of retirement plan, okay? And they want to know which to put their $500, what seed I need to plant, whether it's based on, in, in, in this situation, a bank, whether it's in a brokerage account, which we're going to call non-qualified type of accounts, the third one is called a qualified account, kind of like a 401k or retire, a retirement plan through your job. And the fourth one is, is through that mystery industry. If you watch the forms of money presentation, the forms of money, uh, the fourth, the fourth home of money is the life insurance industry. Yes, life insurance is an asset class, ladies and gentlemen. It's just, it's, okay. And so we're going to share this with you, but that's the assumption. And the other part of the assumption is this gentleman does it for 10 years. So 500 bucks a month for 10 years. And then at 46, since, you know, he's making a little bit more money, you know, maybe he doesn't have as many bills. Maybe his kids are, they're not spending so much money on daycare. Now he starts increasing to 750 a month, right? 
And so, and so, uh, and then he does that from uh, what, 46 to uh, uh, 50, uh, 55 years old. And then from 55 to 70 years old, he puts in a thousand dollars a month, put a thousand dollars a month into this plan of which you can save for his financial future. And then here's, here's a sweet spot. Here's a sweet spot in this report. What happens when you stop pulling this money out based on the required minimum distributions, which begins at 72 and a half years old, all the way to 100 years old? Would you like to see that? Zan and I are going to break this down right here. And so let's uh, go ahead and share our screen right, right quick, Zan. So uh, let, me, let me make sure we uh, get to the right deal here. Boom, three, two, one. And then once again, we got to make sure we are legal and compliant. So let's uh, let's everybody read this carefully, okay? Yada, 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 right? Make sure you uh, uh, understand this and, and read this before we continue on. So therefore, you know exactly this is purely for just illustration purposes where, again, we're not giving you insurance or financial, legal, tax advice. All right, let's move along. So here we go. The, the Here, let me zoom up here real quick. Uh, here, here's a lot of things that a lot of people don't realize above above just the death benefit. Life insurance does a few things here, quite a few things. Income tax free death benefits for beneficiaries, accumulate cash value, tax free accumulation of cash values, competitive current interest rate. We'll share with you a competitive uh, current interest rate right now. Lifelong income options, lifelong income options. That's a big deal. Uh, tax free access to cash values through policy loans, probate free uh, death benefit for beneficiaries, privacy of all transactions. So therefore the government or nobody uh, knows about this unless you tell them. Uh, advance of death benefits in, a, in an adverse health circumstance that Zan and I were talking about earlier, okay? So over a period of time, this person puts in cumulatively $342,000 of savings over their lifetime. 500 bucks a month, 750, 1,000 bucks a month, right Zan? Is, is that the, the yep. current assumption here? Okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna, we're gonna hit the play button. So you guys are gonna get a, literally a financial preview of what happens when somebody chunks in 342 to the various financial alternatives that's available to them in their life for their serious money that they know that needs to be there. So Zan, uh, I'm gonna go to the next page. I'm gonna ask you to drive from here. So, uh, sure. uh, yep, okay. So let, let's go over here to this uh, slide here. Uh, we did we did uh, CD, any taxable investment, tax deferred account. These are the various financial terms compared to your product uh, at National Life, which is called Flex Life. Flex Life. You know, back, back in the day when I was seeing clients from 1998 to 2010, I used to sell your old Paragon policies. Wow. It took me way back. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what, uh, Zan? Uh, th that was during the 01.com bubble. That was during the 08, 09 Great Recession. You know, not one of my clients called me because they're worried about losing money. Matt, that's a, uh, it's an amazing thing you say that. And that's one of the, the beautiful things about this is that, you know, when the, when things go south in a heartbeat, whether it's dot com or 2008, our yep. clients didn't lose any money. Yep. And it's a powerful thing to be able to share that. Yep. So let's take a look at these numbers. Okay, let's 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 go here to these numbers here. So Zan, um, uh, do you, by the way, do you want me to give you uh, co-hosting so therefore you can go up and down the screen? I would. Uh, yeah, I'd be I'd be happy to drive okay. Okay, the cool. car with you. All right, so here you are now my co-host, and you are now my co-host, and you can go share, you can, uh, you can. I'm going to open up his uh, his gym photos, everybody. That are <laughs> his, uh, I'm sure there's a big folder somewhere. Yeah, let's go for him. <laughs> uh, can, can you move the screens out, or, or is that, uh, can I not? No, it's not letting me. Oh, it's not letting you? Okay, so um, I guess I'll have to drive. Okay. Okay. That's okay. okay. Is it okay? Okay, cool. Yep. And so Zan, let's, let's, I, this. okay, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was just going to say, I mean, one thing everybody that I would, I would quickly add as well is that in this business, you're going to hear it a ton. You're going to hear people that love the idea of cash value life insurance. They love it. They preach it just like you. You're out on the street talking about, oh, you, you know, tax-free income. But you're also going to hear a lot of people that say what trash value, the stuff sucks. You know, I don't want it. No, so-and-so said this, I found this video uh, that says it's bad. Here's the thing. 
what you have to do every single time, and it's important because we're showing you different financial alternatives in this, but the thing to always consider, and one thing I always am considering is that extremism of one type is never a good thing. I would never go out and tell anybody, put all your money this, put all your money there, or anything like that. It's just showing you how this can look versus some other alternatives out there. Is it isn't saying that one is necessarily better than the other. It's pointing out different different factors that could influence your decision that it may be important to you. Things to consider down the road. So just keep that in mind. Great, great, great aspect. Okay. So so here the the life insurance premium is the 6000 here and breaking that down means 500 bucks a month times 12. Right? That's for the year. That's for the year. So so uh so assuming Zen, you had six thousand dollars that year, five hundred bucks a month in a CD. You have, uh, he, he, and here, here the, here the, also the uh, rates of return that we projected this at. And Zen, can you give a a, a brief summary of what these projected uh, interest rates represent? Yeah, absolutely. And to be honest with you, Matt, um, all the when you run this software, you've got the ability to choose for yourself. You can be more conserved. You can be more aggressive with it. Um, I chosen to be a little bit more on the conservative side. And when you look at something like a certificate of deposit, uh, 1% is actually pretty bold. Uh, it, <laughs> I don't know the exact amount of a CD today, but I can tell you that's not fantastic. Um, but Round it up. we look, yeah, look it up. I think the average saving account is something like, oh man, I, I'm not even going to try to. I, try I just bank rated it. This. I just bank rated it. So best, best CDs, right? Uh, 0. 0.8%, 0. 0.75, 0.7. So that, that's what you got. That's what everybody's looking at in, in terms of a CD, you know, geez. It, oh, it's I mean, it's not pretty. Yeah, look at that. It's, so it's, crazy, man. It's 0.8%. It's, it's, Point, and it's, so, yeah. It's funny, Matt, what is everybody like, you know, you ask, you ask people, um, you know, the advice that your, some of the people's parents or your grandparents might give you is, oh, put, put your money away in savings, honey, you know, put your money away in savings. Honestly, it's not doing a whole lot for you. And we, and, and based on our report, we rounded up. We did. Yeah. Be so conservative we, there. We, we, we rounded up in our report here. So, okay. So, so go ahead. Go ahead, Zan. CD's at yeah. 1%. See, so he's at 1%. So we're being, uh, yeah, we're, we're actually boosting up a bit. Any taxable investment yield, uh, what does that translate to? We're, we're thinking may, mainly here like a brokerage account, okay? Uh, something you're going to be, uh, um, you know, taxed on now and, and, and taxed on later as well when you're taking it out. So that's what a taxable investment yield is. Think about it like that. And again, the number I'm using is just completely arbitrary. It is just, um, you know, I don't want to come out saying a high amount and we don't want to go too low, but just something right in the middle. And you're going to have the same with a tax deferred account. Okay. So what's a tax deferred account, everybody? Well, you, you, you're not taking the uh, tax hit now. And it's like a retirement account that like a non-qualified account and later on you're taking money out and then you get taxed. That's it. So that's it. So we're comparing something you can earn 1% at five and a half and five and a half. You yep. know, the, the, any taxable investment, you make money this year, you get a 1099 at the end of that taxable year. Tax deferred account, you grow your money, grow your money, grow your money, grow your money grow. over years and decades, zero 1099, no, no tax bill that you owe. But man, once you take your money out for retirement purpose or for whatever you need, boom, that's where the taxes hit. And uh, and uh, that's why we put here income tax rate 31%, right? And by the way, uh, Zan, some, some people say, well, that's that's really high, that's really high. What do you think is going to go on right now with the new uh, Biden administration? They they want to, what did Biden say? We're raising taxes, and uh, we're also going to eliminate the Trump Cuts and Jobs Act tax reductions. They also want to say they want to uh, pay for your college, health care for all, right? Uh, 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 universal basic income. We want to pay you fifteen bucks an hour. If your employers are going to pay that, we're going to find a way for the government to have some form of minimum payment per year so better question who's gonna pay for all that that's us and that's why potentially income tax is are gonna be much higher because 
historically speaking, Zen, you've been in, you've studied the markets. Historically speaking, are we in one of the highest income tax environments in the history of America, or are we in one of the lowest income tax rates in America? We are in one of the lowest, and it's amazing when you look at some of that data. People, and you actually look at what the highest marginal tax rates have been in the country. I mean, guys. I don't know if you know this, but the highest marginal tax rate in our country was actually close to, I think it's 93% at one point. And for the longest period of time, it was around 70% at the highest marginal tax rates. So that's something to consider. When, when, I mean, the narrative had always been, you know, defer your taxes, defer your taxes, defer your taxes. And that's what people preached. But diversifying your future taxes and looking at things that are going to be tax-free later on is so important because everything that just, Matt just said, but also we're in so much debt really as a, there you go, pulled it out. 92-ish, 93-ish percent. I nailed it. <laughs> Back when everybody was World War II. Yeah. You know, shoot. Yeah. So that that's mm -hmm. what we're potentially facing. You know, down the road, not to cut you off, Zan, I just want to share this report. I mean, you're, you're no, a flow, it's brother. It's, it's, it's important. I mean, and that's the whole, that's what we talk about with, with, you know, life insurance. That's one of the, 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 um, the beautiful things about it is because there are a lot of people out there that don't have the ability to contribute to something that is going to be taken out tax-free. If after you make a certain amount of money, Matt, you can't, you can't stick it in a Roth, yeah. you know, that's tax-free later on. So this is yeah. a, an avenue for a lot of people that helps them diversify those, those tax distributions in the future. Yeah, if you were looking to make a little bit more money down the road, like, you know, six figures, 250, can't you put your money inside a Roth IRA anymore? You are what they call phased out. You're mm -hmm. phased out of being able to contribute to a Roth IRA, which is another form of tax advantage, tax-free withdrawals down the road. But what's interesting about this report here, what you uh, shared in terms of the rate of return of what this insurance policy does, Zan, you illustrated at 4.42, which you called a weighted... What do you call that? A weighted, uh, uh, weighted average return. Nailed it. So can, can you can you unpack that and, and give a, a layman's definition of what the four four two yeah. stands for? Yeah, absolutely. So guys, when you run an illustration um, for an insurance policy, you got to remember something. There is a portion of your money when you submit a premium into National Life or any insurance company out there, and it's it's like an index product like this, an index universal life product, a portion of that money actually sits in an account that is going to earn a fixed rate of return. A fixed rate of return is generally gonna be a lower amount than you would earn in the IUL. So over time, you're always gonna have some money earning that fixed rate. But you, over time, you're gonna have more of your money earning whatever's in the index account. But with that said, if you've got some money, a lot of money earning this much higher and a lot of money or some money earning you know, a lower rate, you're gonna have a bit of an average. This rate that you're seeing is for the first year. So in the illustration, as you unpack it, that goes up and up and up higher and higher and higher. It's a limitation of the software really, Matt. It's just gonna show what the amount is in the very first year. By the way, it's a good limitation because it even further makes this it conservative. A conservative illustration. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, because, because by the way, Zen, I've owned index universal life policies for close to 20 years now. And I've had double digit returns in my own personal policies. Mm -hmm. So so having a 442, it's a more of a conservative experience that I have personally. But by the way, again, I share that as a personal experience. I'm not saying that's all of our clients or what's going to happen to you. But I'm sure with my own personal experience, my own personal policies, that is what has happened to me. Same thing too with my mother. Uh, she owns uh, 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 Index Universal Life Policies. Uh, Zan, when we're, when we're talking about this, uh, you know, a lot of those uh, permanent life, what you call it earlier, trash value type uh, uh, conversation happen. This is not whole life, everybody. This is not whole life. Everybody thinks permanent life insurance is only one style of permanent life, which is whole life, Right. There, there's whole life and then there's universal life and then there's very vari then variable whole life was created then variable universal life created and this is the fifth iteration of permanent life insurance which is called indexed index universal life which in this case is a flex life with the national life group based on the illustration we're sharing here am i correct in saying that zen correct me if i'm wrong 
Yeah, you you absolutely nailed it, Matt. And I mean, that's the, and, and that's the truth. And I would just comment on that even further saying, hey, listen, there is there are so many different types of products out there and there is not one that is fit for everybody. In fact, there might be somebody out there, believe it or not, where Index Universal Life isn't a great fit for them. And this needs, it needs to be remembered that this is something that works fantastic for the right client. If it's not designed the right way, and if it's for the wrong client, of course it won't work out great. It needs to be for the right person. And you can't stick a square peg in a round hole. I mean, it's just, it's not gonna work out for you. So that's something else to consider with it, with when you're looking at different products, because there's, there's so many out there. All right. So let's continue to, to sink our teeth into this thing. So, sure. so here the first year. Okay. So the first, let's say the first 10 years. Okay. First 10 years, your money grows into this thing. You put $6,000 a year, 10 years, a total of $60,000. Okay. So in your whopping 1% CD, you got 62,000. Woo, who's fired up? <laughs> right? So, so uh, let me make, make sure I'm, I'm, I circle this so everybody knows what we're looking at. So here's, here's what we're looking at. So here over a period of 10 years, right? You put in 6,000 a year for 10 years. And this is the result of those 10 years, earning a 1% one, 1 uh, uh, rate of return inside a CD, okay? Generous 1% though. Generous, yeah, very generous. All right, exactly. Uh, let me drive this over here. Okay, so inside this, any taxable any taxable investment mm -hmm. or, or, or compared to the other category, 3A, 3B, and 4A, 4B, this is any taxable. So in other words, you grow your money at, what is that, five and a half, and then you pay tax on whatever the percentage of the growth is. Whether it be a 10, mm -hmm. 1099 INT or a 1099 DIV, uh, it depends on what you actually put that, investment in. Okay. Yep. And then, and also Zan on 4A, 4B, just like we were talking about a 401k or what we call a tax deferred account. Okay. We, we don't pay any taxes as growing. This is what happens to your money at five and a half percent over, over a 10 year period. So instead of having $62,000 in the $62,000 in the, in the bank, now you got 74,000 and 74,836 respectively in the uh, taxable, uh, in, uh, any taxable investment or a tax deferred account. So can you explain the, uh, the three different numbers, uh, the 62,000, the 74,000 and the 74,836 number? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so obviously these are earning different rates of return, right? We see 1%, we see five and a half percent. And another thing you've got to keep in mind that as these grow, we are not, for the sake of this illustration, there's nothing in it that is accounting for expenses and management fees that are often attributed. You probably heard that in 401ks and wow. in brokerage accounts, there are fees, okay? So those are things in this illustration you can actually include and deduct, but those are things to keep in mind. This isn't a perfect example. I mean, it's, it's, it's not perfect exact numbers and sizes, but this again is giving you an idea of what that money could look like and how it can look versus ultimately life insurance policy. Yep. And remember the money that you see there, when you take it out, there's tax on it. So keep that in mind. So as we, as, as we continue Zan, um, this is after 10 year period. Uh, and then we well, let's move on then to the uh, life insurance category. So let's let's move over there to see what that looks like, and this is this is where a lot of our detractors say, "Well, that's why this sucks." Yeah, it's half the yeah. amount that's inside of my four hundred one k, even my bank CD. But what 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 also are they forgetting about too? Remember, this is a life insurance policy. A lot of them are forgetting. Hey, what happens if something happens to you in those ten? Just like the example you brought up earlier about a thirty six year old uh, uh, woman. We never thought that she'd get breast cancer at 36 years old. Well, next thing you show, she does. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, some people get so caught up on, uh, on this, on the early cash values of these things, comparing it. Oh, I could do so much better in, in this, uh, you know, in the stock market with this and that. It's like, okay, yeah, maybe. But let me ask you something. What's your return on death? 
That's what I say. What's your return on death in the first few years? Because if this person dies in year four, 861 grand is being paid out to the heirs. If somebody gets sick, Matt, in those earlier years and they need to access it for cancer, heart attack, stroke, and so forth, we've gone through that before, they have access to that, those monies. In the other accounts, you're limited to what your balance is plus the tax. So, so Zan, in other words, let's use a 10 year number. If something happens in year 10, right? And let's say something happens to you and, and sadly the Lord calls you home, you check out, you pass away, your family gets the remainder of your CD. They get the remainder of your any taxable amount. They get the remainder of this. However, what do they have to pay when they receive this in a qualified account? They got to pay Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam and income tax. Mm -hmm. So you might receive this, but you can get a 1099 at the end of the year. And over here on this side, if something happens to you in year 10, uh, uh, some, uh, let, me, let me clear the uh, screen here real quick. Let me clear. Something happens in year 10. You do not receive 35,691. What do we receive, Zan? 861 big ones. How much income tax we got to pay on that, Zan? <laughs> Zip. None. Same thing if you got sick. That's, that stuff's tax-free while you're living for those for those reasons. And, and Matt, one of the things that people get so caught up on, you know, they're looking at the early cash values of these things. They're like, wow, there's just like nothing in there. It's like, you know what? At the end of the day, you got to remember something. There's a cost for this stuff. So don't even worry about it. There's a cost. You know, in fact, some of that money, Matt, it goes to the life insurance carriers. That's how we are able to make money and pay claims. But you got to keep in mind, this is a long-term story. And in fact, most of those charges and expenses occur in those first 10 years. After that, that's where this thing's able to really accelerate and build more cash value. Zan, let's, let's, well, let's go there then. So uh, let, let's go here. So they do, the, okay, so in this example, we do mm -hmm. 6,000 a year for 10 years. And then we, we see him ratchet this up to 750 bucks a month, which is $9,000, which is, which is $9,000 a year. Let me just let me just circle that so people can follow along too as well. So from 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 his age of forty five years old to fifty four years old, he's put nine thousand dollars a year, which is ninety uh, uh, ninety grand over those ten years. And then from age fifty five to sixty four, he puts twelve thousand. But we're not done yet. Uh, let me let me continue down here uh, as well. Uh, and he goes all over here, page two. And then he, he does this all the way until he's 70 years old. Zan, is this real? I mean, do, do you see a lot of people still in their 70s still working? Is that still, it has, is, is it uh, an, uh, an ordinary thing now to see 70 year olds still working? Hey, I mean, I, I'll tell you what, Matt, you, you, you do and you don't. I guess it depends on your situation. But um, in this case, I mean, there's some people that say they want to work forever, right? Yep. Never going to stop working and things like that. Um, but, you know, you may, you may not have a choice in the matter. Uh, you know, what if you became, you know, sick or, or whatnot, but there's certainly plenty of people that, that are, and, and may be contributing to that point. The point is, are you working because you want to or working because you have to? Correct. And, and, and if you are retiring at 70, here's, here, here's our recommendation. Once you're retired, please don't unretire. Please have this tough conversation now. Please have a thought, an idea, a budget, a discipline to say, hey, let me chunk away. And by the way, it doesn't have to be 500 bucks a month. It could be 250. It could be 750. Whatever is the most appropriate and suitable for you. That's the type of conversation you need to have with the insurance professional that's helping you with this type of strategy. Okay. So, so Zen, we're here at seven years old now. We're at seven years old. And they've put in all this money. And we, we talked about, you know, 300 and uh, what was the number here? Uh, cumulative uh, amount of money contributed into this account was 300 and what was here? 300 and take it on my calculator just in case. 42. It's 342. It's 342. Okay. 342,000. So $342,000 of total money went into either potentially a CD, any taxable investment, a tax deferred account, and in this case, a Flex Life National Life Group Index Universal Life Policy. So let's take a look. $382,000. $382,000 is... <laughs> All right, so this is how much money you got inside your bank account. 
Let me, let me get let me get the label up here. Uh, let me see if I can screen that, uh, squeeze that out. Okay, so here, no, notice the zeros here on the left hand side. They're done putting money away. They're retired. They're no longer contributing to these plans. They're retired. They're done. But in a CD, how much do we have? 300, uh, 382,000 right there. Zan, look at this, man. Any taxable investment, 5.5%, 664. 746. Oh my gosh. Look at this, 659 only compared to the 740. So, man, I got more money in my 401k. But wait. But wait. But wait. Because we, uh, 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 we, uh, we also want to take money from this to live on. Right to supplement right. our 401k, to supplement our hopefully social security that's still around. Right, we want we want to supplement. So so Zan, what is what is the uh, the misnomer? You're a, what do you call it? Retirement income RICP. <laughs> what is that? Resume? Yeah, retirement income certified professional. I know this stuff is uh, you know when I, uh, some of the, some of the names. I mean. That's why we stick to the abbreviations, but a lot of them don't even know the, the acronyms. I mean, they're just, uh, you don't even know what a lot of them stand for. I, I, I get them all put up on here. I get confused now. You know? <laughs> so so the, these these are, this is the preview. So basically we've done a preview of what your money could look like. Let me, let me zoom out here a little bit, okay? This is this year what your money will look like in either, uh, 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 again, uh, a certificate of deposit, any taxable investment, a tax deferred account. And here, um, uh, uh, where's, the, where's the category here? Uh, uh, say, say, right here, 5B, 659 here inside insurance contract. Now, with that being said, what happens if this person doesn't live a day in retirement? Something happens to them. They get a check for how much? Or the beneficiaries get a check for how much? Back to the 861. 861. Yep. Back to 861. Okay. If if they if they uh, pass away here with the four hundred and one k, their family receives a seven forty six. But again, what do they have to pay when they, when they receive this? A lot of taxes. A lot of taxes. So it's not even seven forty six. No, no way. I mean, I mean, just just eyeballing that. I mean, you assume that same, you know, rough thirty percent or so. Everybody. I mean, that's like two hundred twenty five thousand dollars ish. Mm -hmm. Uh, give or take. I mean, so subtract that out from it. Um, yeah, yeah. That's the that's the net that's the net net income, or the net proceeds. Mm -hmm. But then we're we're gonna get really advanced here because now starting at seventy five years old. Because we're assuming that uh, 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 they either use our four hundred and one k or they use some form of social security for these five years. And now, in this example, now we're gonna start taking money out of the contract, mm -hmm. or taking money out of whatever alternative investment, right? So yeah. Take so we're going to take. Yeah, and that number, Matt. Just to clarify, that's based on, and a good way to look at this, everybody, is that I solved using the lifetime income benefit rider on the national life policy, and that gave me sixty thousand five hundred and thirty-seven dollars. Okay, that is tax-free money. What the what you're seeing right here, and that's this is why you're seeing sixty thousand five thirty seven next to every single one of these. Basically, what the software is doing is saying, "Hey, how long would each of these last if I were to take the same amount out of all of the other policies?" Now, there's something to remember, though, and to keep in mind. We're taking out sixty thousand five thirty seven tax free here. However, that sixty five thirty seven from all the other accounts, well, there's gonna be a tax associated with it. So you've got to remember that even though it's showing the same amount coming out, all things aren't equal. You have to take a bit more out of those other accounts to equal the same 60,537. Uh, 60, and I'll just quickly throw out there, I, I talked about this on, on a webinar I did last week. How do you how do you go ahead and we're gonna make it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more advanced. How do you take that and make it? How do you turn that into what would be the taxable amount or what they would need to take to have it equal the uh, the pre-tax amount? And uh, Matt, it's and I think you're you're getting to it right there. But you take this sixty thousand five thirty seven and divide it by one minus the tax rate. Okay, and that'll give you. 
the amount that they would actually have to draw from the tax deferred and taxable investment to equal the 6537. I don't know if that made complete sense or not, but it's a very helpful tip. So, so in other words, so 60,000, I'm just doing the math here, 60,537 divided by 1.31, which is the 31% income tax rate, right? One minus uh, 0 0.31. A point. So, so 60,537 minus divided by, divided by 0.69. 0.69, gotcha. So 0.69, yeah, I got, I got, I see what you mean. Okay. Yep. So they actually have to pull out $87,000 in a tax deferred account, pay the tax and then net the 60,537. That's what you're saying, Zan? That's what I'm saying. Exactly. You broke and it down then, so simply, Matt. Very nice. <laughs> and this is assuming no state income tax because we haven't even talked about cousin California yet. Oh, right. We haven't taken about these guys. Okay. So Zan, wow, this, I mean, for those of you watching this, I hope you can put in these two things together. It's not what you have, it's what you have to keep. It's not what you have, it's what you get to, is what you get to spend and live on. Okay, so let's let's continue forward. So let's say 60,000, 60,000. So Zan, you, you see this waterfall right here? Can you explain this waterfall of money coming here? 60,000, 60, and then it drops off. 60,000, yeah, 60,000, 60,000, and it drops off. 60,000, <laughs> right? Dies. What's going on? What's happening? That's happening, Matt, is that you are running out of money, my friend, and <laughs> it, <laughs> you have lost. When it comes to your income, at that point, you have officially lost. And Matt, what is the greatest fear for people ages 55 to 65? What is the running number one out fear? of money? Yeah, outliving the retirement money. It's no joke. They fear it more than death because it's a real thing. And these are the reasons we need to consider tax-free and tax-deferred. Okay, so obviously uh, the two of the four homes of money, CDs, banks, bank CDs, and any taxable investment, uh, a brokerage account, these are obviously two homes that have collapsed in this scenario. The, 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 the financial house of cards just collapsed because of income taxes and their money la lasting for the rest of life. Okay, let's continue then. What about this waterfall of money? See, so this 60,000 right here continues to grow. Oh, I'm sorry, continues to be withdrawn. And let's go on to the next page. Uh, let's go on to the next page here. Let me get out of here. Okay. It, it continues to be withdrawn. Now the person's 100 years old. Well, 98 years old to be exact. Okay, so let, let me let me uh, circle that. So here at 98 years old, it looks like they ran, according to the previous assumption, looks like they ran out of money here because they didn't have no money at 90. Uh, if they lived to 99 years old, they had no money in this account at least. That's correct. Yeah. And and again, I go back to what we just talked about. I mean, the the one the the one limitation of this is you gotta you if you want a direct comparison, you've got to pretend that they're taking 87 grand a year out if they want it, if you want a direct comparison and to have it equal the after tax of the 6537 coming out or the uh, the tax free money coming out of the life insurance policy. So what would that mean, Matt? Would what would would that extend further or would it collapse a lot sooner in, ter in terms of them uh, um they got to have this money extend but it can't they have to have they can't they in in the in the fact of the matter is if they had to draw that eighty seven thousand dollars out to have it equal to sixty thousand five thirty seven it would lapse so much more premature sure. yeah yes yeah so so th this is assuming that uh, the income tax weren't taken up, but if it was, then th they wouldn't even get to 98 years old. Right. So you're I'm being, close. you're actually being generous here in this report. That would be, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but here inside these life insurance contract, you're still taking out 60,537 all the way until hundred years old, still going strong. And based on uh, so fancy rules of uh, IRS code 7702, and uh, uh, right, you can 
with, withdraw this money, or in this case, loan this money from the policy without paying a dime in tax? Absolutely. And, yeah. And, 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 uh, go ahead, go ahead, Zan. No, 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 Matt, I didn't mean to, 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 to break your role there. I was just going to say this should actually be in the actual life insurance policy. You would be seeing that 60,537 60, going to age 120, which we're all going to live to, but it would be going out guaranteed for all those years to age 120 with the lifetime income benefit rider. Assuming that they live to 120 years old. There you go. And Which we all are going to. Right? <laughs> yeah. And Let's say in this example, because I know we don't have 120 years old, uh, uh, page three, what happens if they check out at 100 years old? They took out, they took out 60,537 and the next day they checked out, everybody goes to the funeral, everybody says, thank you for not depending on me for income. Thank you so much, we are celebrating your life, no GoFundMe. Uh, Zan, what's this number on the right? This 110,231, what, what does that mean? The heirs are still going to get a little something, Matt, and it's going to be a tax-free death benefit that goes to the heirs of 110 grand. So they still leave behind something in the life insurance policy for somebody to either inherit or bury or whatever they want to do with it. So they're free to do it, assuming that they're, they're the beneficiary. So even if they took out 60537 in the hundredth year of their life, and the next day they checked out 110000 is still the net death benefit from this policy and here's a crazy part compared to and by the way i think we need to do this another uh, um episode but the whole the buy term and invested difference type of scenario the policy would have never lasted if i had a buy term insurance type of scenario it would have exhausted a long time ago and assuming that money was in and if they invested a difference inside of any, any taxable investment or a tax deferred account as we saw it would have exhausted a long time ago because they have to pay uh, uh, a federal and state income tax but in this scenario, not that it's a solution for all of your money, as Dan had said earlier, but if you want a chunk of your money going into this type of strategy, this is what it can look like. And, uh, Absolutely. and we, just, we just did a preview. We saved somebody 20, 30, 40, 50 years of wondering what if, what if, what if, and, and I hope this report helps you understand and, and get clarity on what if. And, and Matt, I would also say, just like you said, I, I, I'm somebody, Matt, that I have all of these things that we're going through right here. I have a 401k. I have a brokerage account. Um, I own and, and I trade stock. And I have a life policy with cash value. I got gold here what? in my office. I got gold in my office. Look at there. that. Ooh, I got gold. Credit I got Suisse. Silver. I, got, I, I, love <laughs> I love gold. My paperweight. <laughs> <laughs> The, right, the point is, you, you you diversify with what you have. You diversify the way that you're, you're taxed on different things because we don't know. I mean, we have we're starting to get a good idea. Like Matt was saying, we got a lot of debt to pay off as a country. What are tax rates going to be like in the future? Okay, we we have a certain idea. We don't know exactly, but diversify the streams of money that you're taking. Yep. Putting all of your eggs in one basket, extremism of any type, is never a good thing. Yep. You've got to spread everything out, and these aren't exact numbers. You know, somebody's going to say, oh, my, my, my brokerage account earns a, is going to earn a lot more. Well, you're going to have bad years too, okay? These are just numbers and you play with them. You try to interpret the best that you can, but at the end of the day, you're able to use this to make an educated decision and see how that money actually is going to function down the road when you take into account all the tax consequences and situations of retirement. I, I want to go over one last page of this report because it just summarizes what we just went over. You know, you, so here over 66 years of your life, right? 66 years of your life. But look at year 66, hundred years old. You're hundred years old in this example. You just tucked away 342 into either those, those instruments over here or this instrument over here. You had either an after-tax cash flow of 400,000, 1 million, 1.4 million, or $1.5 million. And then over here, you still had a net death benefit of 110. Over here, you have zero net death benefit or net proceeds left over. So not only did it outlast the other three different homes of money, but also left behind a nice little present for the next generation. How nice. Very nice.
I, I think that this is where the lack of education and the lack of at least exposure, you know, I, at the very least, if, if you're watching this video right now, I want you to at least be exposed to this conversation and, and, and see what's out there and, and have meaningful, more meaningful conversations. And please don't depend on GoFundMe. Please don't depend on, on, on other people, the government at the, you know, when, when push comes to shove, you can have your money work hard for you. You just got to know where to put your money. And guys, if you look at me, unlike Zan, you know, I'm, I'm nobody special and I'm just a jury head. They just came out the Marine Corps and I just got exposed to the money game. And the coolest part about me uh, getting involved in the insurance industry is I get to rub elbows with uh, professionals and sharp, good people like Zan Rizal here. So Zan, a quick plug for you. If you're an insurance professional and you're watching this video and you don't have access to Innsmark software like this to assist your clients, my suggestion you connect with Zan Rizal. He represents a phenomenal insurance company. And I, I, I want to share this. He's been around with insurance. He's been with an insurance company that's been around since, what was the year, Zan? 1848. Woo! Who was, ar yes. who was around in 1848, man? Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> Matt, <laughs> nobody I know, but I can tell you this. That's before the Civil War. Matt's got, Matt took out a map. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. That's, that's America in 1848. <laughs> I, I think Texas still thinks they're that big, actually. <laughs> wow, there, there, were two, there were two political classes, the Whig class and the Democratic class, not even the Republican. Wow. Isn't it crazy? California it is was around here. You know, so. The, the thing I'd also add, Matt, is, you know, people, people talk about uh, how Wisconsin was just becoming a state. Hey, people yeah. talk about how, 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 um, you know, the naysayers out there that are like, you know, this, you shouldn't use cash value insurance. You, you shouldn't think of it as an asset class. Well, the other thing I always like to go back to is if this is something that is truly in the worst interest of somebody, then I highly doubt that a 172 year old company would be placing all of its chips behind it. I think that would be a bad move. Um, this is a company that has had a long history and that longevity is because they've done the right thing by their clients and put them in the best products possible. And we're still doing that today. Um, the other thing I, I would also add to what you had mentioned about Insmark is, ladies and gentlemen, if you are a, an agent of the National Life Group, which I know many of you are, you actually have free access to Insmart. This is a thousand dollar a. Uh, this is a thousand dollar software. No joke. You look on the website right now; it's the first thing you'll see. Nine hundred ninety nine dollars for the software, but we give it to you free. It is on the soft. It's on the when you run an illustration with National Life Group, you'll see Insmart. Download it, and you can do the same thing that we just did. Nice. Get your report, assist, and help your clients get educated about their options. I'm, I'm a jarhead, man. I need I need pictures. I need colors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so good with spreadsheets and illustrations. And if to, to help more people just like me, if you're an agent to help more people just like me, this is de definitely a helpful tool. If you're out there, listen, and, and you're wondering, if, if you're not an agent, you're thinking about getting involved in the insurance business, this is a great tool for you to launch your career on educating people. You, I started part-time in, in the insurance industry. This eventually became my full-time career. And I use software just like this to educate folks about what alternatives they have for, for, uh, for where they uh, took their money away. Um, and if you're just somebody out there, I'm not insured, uh, insured by being invited to the insurance industry. I'm not interested in becoming an agent, but I do want to tuck my money away. Just make sure your agent has tools like this to help educate you on where specifically uh, some, some concepts where you need to tuck your money away. So Zen, you've been very generous with your time, uh, but I got a giveaway before I let you go. I got a giveaway. Uh, uh, we, we have a special book. And one of my mentors that's taught me all this stuff in, uh, since 2005 his name is Douglas Andrew. He wrote a book here called The Laser Fund. Uh, there's two different. There's two books in one here. One for the one for the left brain, and one for the right brain. Ah, mm -hmm. one for the right brain and one for the left brain. And the fun he talks about is a, is a yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a uh, life insurance contract. And if you're the first, if you're the first three to comment what you took away from this video, and you drop it in the comment section below, the first three comments in either Facebook or YouTube, I have 
one, two, three books to give away to you to send it from my office to your address. And better yet, it's autographed by the author, Douglas Andrew and his two sons, Aaron and Emrin. Uh, these are good friends of mine. They're based out of Salt Lake City. Um, they've absolutely not only changed my life, not only my client's life, but also my career around. So therefore, you know, they actually led me to your company back in the mid 2000s. So, uh, so the exciting, exciting. Very, very generous of you, Massapa. Oh, good brother. Hey man, I'll be seeing you later on this week, man. Well, I'll, I'll see you in uh, San Antonio, right? This week? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. February in Louisville, Kentucky. Well, I'll see you in February in Louisville, Kentucky for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> man, oh man. It's, it's been a crazy year, everybody. I mean, let's listen, let's, uh, I, 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 and I'm honestly, Matt, um, being able to uh, to even even go over um, remotely like this, I feel like I'm a little bit closer to to everybody. I miss everybody so much. I miss being in your offices and training in person. It was around this time last year that I was in y'all's office, and uh, and I miss it so much. So I can't wait till till we have that live event. So I wish it was next week. For sure, man. For sure, Zan. Guys, if you haven't followed Zan Rizal yet on Instagram, make sure you follow him. Because he shares some educational stuff in a fun and engaging way to help you wrap your mind around what the life insurance industry can do to help you build a solid foundation to your financial home. And for those of you that's out there, I would I would love to know what your feedbacks are, your follow-ups, your thoughts, your questions. Drop it in the comment section below. If you watch this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you watch this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications the next time we upload our next episode. An episode a day for the 20 first 24 days of December here for Vlogmas 2020, of which this episode is a part of. I appreciate you all for tuning in. On behalf of Zen Rizal, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Merry Christmas. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.